Oh, we've got a keyboard. There we go. So happy. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Now, are you one of those people that just get so frustrated when YouTubers upload PC build videos with graphics cards that you just can't get your hands on? Are you one of those people right now looking at the screen going, yes, I am sick of it? Then this could be the solution. Temporary solution, kind of a solution, will help for now. What we're gonna be doing is doing a PC build using the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G which has a graphics processor inside of it. Now what we're gonna to aim to do is give you some light to mid 1080p gaming to tide you over until you can get a graphics card that you can then just slot in. Now there are some limitations using the G processor over something like the 5600X. It doesn't support Gen 4 drives like NVMe. So if you do plan on upgrading that at, you know, at a later point in time, that's something you do need to consider. But on the plus side, that means we don't have to use a B550 board and we can just upgrade a B450, um, but with a BIOS flash, uh, which means that we've got this board here, which is 50 quid, which is actually <laughs> really uh, great value for money. And it saves us a bit of money as well because B550 is a little bit more expensive. Now, what graphics card to go with this? Something like a 3060 Ti would be a good choice. That'll make a good pairing. Um, sounds like a wine doesn't make a good pairing. But as base, the AMD 5600G is a six core 12 thread processor, 3.9 gigahertz base clock, 4.4 boost clock. Again, on the more to max, if you can't find this in the States, then the Bazooka is another great option. It's still B450M uh, Micro ATX, which will fit into our Micro ATX case. For memory, I've gone for the Team Group Vulcan X. This is a 3200 megahertz kit. You could get a 3600, which would be a little bit more um, suited for Ryzen, but in the name of keeping things budget, this is um, a pretty affordable set. 16 gigs, two eight gig sticks in uh, a nice gray. I was gonna go for a red kit, but I thought the gray would go a little bit better with our colors. Now, as the motherboard is B450M, which is micro ATX, we're gonna need a micro ATX case. This is the Q300L from Kuna Master. Sells for about 40 to 50 pounds on the standard in the UK, which is great. A great value for money. It's got some removable filters on it as well. You can change which orientation you put those as well, depending on the kind of design. It's got one fan in the back, which is a 120, and we're gonna put two more Arctic um, 120 mils in the front just to get a little bit more airflow, and I have factored those into the price as well. For storage, I'm gonna recommend that you go for a WD SN550 one terabyte um, NVMe drive. Now, I've got an Intel one as kind of a placeholder, because I bought everything here minus the processor, which was sent out on loan from AMD. So I couldn't afford to get everything um, for this build at the moment. So there's a little bit of a placeholder, but the Intel drive is actually slower than the one I'm recommending. So you will get a faster read and write on the one that I'm gonna put in the description. Also the benefit for spending a little bit more on that one terabyte drive is we don't have to have, you know, a hard drive around the back with extra cables. It's all literally in a small little stick Gone are the days when we have an SSD and then the hard drive, you know, to get the best out of your system, it's literally all in just that small little M.2, so really quite handy. And then powering it, we've got the VS550 by Corsair. This is a non-modular power supply, so we will have to do a bit more cable management, but there is a nice gap between the motherboard tray and the back panel, so we should be okay. One thing you don't want to cheap out on is your power supply, because if you were to buy a cheap one and it pops, likelihood is it's going to take everything else with it so always invest a little bit more money and get something quality this is 80 plus certified and it's also got a three-year warranty it's actually quite affordable for a Corsair power supply so you get quality and a good price so that's all the parts gone over let's get this build underway and show you that you can game without a graphics card so the first thing we're going to need to do is update the BIOS for our mortar and get it up to date so it will support the 5600G. I'm gonna link a video down in the description to my good friend Marcus's video on how to update the BIOS step by step. I'm gonna only do it briefly, this is not like a step by step tutorial, so I'm just gonna do it um, 
nice and quick. So I've got the eight pin and the 24 pin installed. We don't need a processor to do this, which is really nice and convenient. It's actually nice that you can get a function like this on a 50 pound board as well. So the power supply is turned on. I've got the MSI.ROM file. We have to change the extension um, to something that's readable by the motherboard. And it's literally just gonna go into this USB port at the bottom. And you're gonna press the button and it will start to flash. So the motherboard's just kicked on, the lightning's come up on along the back and there's an update going on here and then you've got the boss flashing as well. When it's finished, that will go off and then your board will be ready to support the newer processor. So we're gonna be using the stock cooler that comes included, the Wraith cooler for AMD. So we're not actually gonna be using these little clips here for aftermarket coolers. So we're gonna take this off, but we still need the back plate, so keep that handy. So we're gonna lift the latch, grab our 5600G. So we're gonna align the golden arrow with the motherboard, so on the bottom left here. Generally speaking, it's 90 degrees right when you're looking at the motherboard in portrait, um, but some motherboards do vary. I think the EVGA dark motherboard has got a different rotation just because of the different layout. Uh, so that's in, socket is down. We're gonna grab our cooler and then put it on the top. This is gonna be going down like this and it will have pre-applied thermal paste when you buy one as retail, but this is a loan sample, so it's been rotated and already used. Obviously, this is a step you won't need to do if you're buying this as retail. This is one that I need to do because it ain't retail. So we've installed the cooler using the top left, bottom right, bottom left, top right, so you're going kind of opposites. Cables routed into the top motherboard header. All nice. Now we're gonna put the memory in, so Let's open up the latches on the second and fourth. These are the ones furthest away from the processor. Nice firm press. There we go. That's really quite nice. So next we're gonna do our M.2 and of course you'll be using the WD if you're following this build, you know, exact. So you've got a little cutout on the bottom right that we're gonna be putting into the right hand side of the socket. Now you will be using a different drive if you're gonna be following this exact, but obviously I'm using a placeholder as I said in the intro, so just something to bear in mind. Let's tuck that cable underneath, it's not in the way. Then in the motherboard box, we'll find our M.2 screw the small list of screws and then I'm going to grab my other iFix and fix it. Screwdriver for this because this is a lot smaller than every other screw we're likely to use. And that's screwed in just enough, no over tightening needed for that and that's that done. That's the processor, cooler, RAM and M.2 all installed and now we can get this into the case along with the power supply. Okay so looking at the case this one has got a nice easy to remove dust filter and we're gonna put some extra fans in, like I said at the start. So I've got these P12 silence from Arctic. We're just gonna put two of these here. And the thing about this, which I really like, is that it's just literally all just perforations. So we can just literally pick anywhere and put it in. They're pretty basic, but they do the job. They are a bestseller on Amazon. They're usually about $5.99 uh, in the States or $4.99 in the UK. And we're literally gonna put it in that way in front of the case. Screw that in and then we should be good to go. So for the bottom one, I've literally done the same thing as before. I did put a little bit of pressure on the cables for the front IO, just to get that fan a little bit closer to the other one. And there you have it. Because those only protrude ever so slightly, we can just literally put this back on. It's done. So for the power supply in this case, it's a little bit different to what we generally see. We've got some screws to remove first which will then release the bracket that the power supply screws into. So now, take that out, there we go. This is gonna literally sit like this, and then it kind of, you know, doesn't leave any gap between the back of the case and the power supply, unlike if it was that way around. Because this case isn't very high off the table, I'm actually gonna use it fan up. So this one up here was really tricky. I've actually had to use the smaller screwdriver to get it in, but it's on nevertheless. So now, that can just slide into the back of the case. So as you can see, we do have a whole Medusa head of cables to deal with. So I'm just going to leave them as is for now rather than routing them through first. So now we can get the power supply bracket 
screwed in. There we go. Now we need to get the motherboard in and then cable it and we're pretty much done. So before we go any further, I just want to talk to you about standoffs. You need to make sure you've got the right one for the right motherboard. So this case currently is set up for a mini ICX, which is even smaller than what we're using. So we need to add ones here um, on the right hand side at the top right. There's also going to be another one on the top left. What I'm going to suggest is just refer to the motherboard um, of what size you have, be it ATX, micro ATX or mini ITX and then your case, so you get the right orientation. If you were to have a standoff touching the back of a motherboard that shouldn't be there, you can potentially cause short circuits. So just make sure you've got the right standoffs for the right motherboard. So one of these trays can be really handy at this point. I've put all the screws into one of these magnetic trays, literally nothing will fall out. So it's all kept nice and secure together. So this is what we're gonna be using to screw in our additional standoffs. On the other side, it's just a standard Phillips. Alternatively, if you've got an iFixit kit, they do actually have the right attachment for it in the iFixit kit. So that's a nice little solution. So now I've got two options for the lower screw and I'm just going to use the motherboard as a guide to see which one we actually need. That's going to be the lower one, I believe. Yeah. So I need to change the position of this one here. This is why I said to make sure and refer to what type of motherboard you have and your case instructions so you don't get the wrong one. It's just a little bit trickier to get in, but still we have got it. So some newer motherboards have the IO shield built in, so it's not something we have to install, but this one being a budget offering is in the box. So look for that if you are using the same motherboard as me. I'm gonna push this in from the inside. Be careful with this because it can be quite sharp. There you go. Now it's in. So now we can put the motherboard in and then we are closer to powering it up. So gently lower this in. And then give a little bit of a wiggle we get it into the hole that's what she said and then we're going to screw it in now for this case it's going to be using these ones that are much like the ones we use with the power supply actually which is nice just refer to the case you're using instructions to make sure you've got the right ones so let's get all these installed i'm using my long boy screwdriver for this one because there are some screws on the left hand side here that are underneath the lip of the case. So it will be a little bit harder to get to get in. I'm just gonna undo this cable tie on this fan. Look for a header that's nearby. There's one down here. I'm too fan of the run of that cable though. So what I might do is do use this one here by the NVMe and hopefully route the cable back underneath the heat sink just to tidy it up. Now that's tucked underneath there, nice and tidy. Right, now I'm gonna pass all the cables through this hole here. I'm gonna have one come back around for the 24 pin here. So as this isn't a modular power supply, it's gonna be a little bit of a spaghetti junction, but we'll make it work, because that's what we do. Okay, there we have it. So I'm gonna pass the 24 pin through now. I'm gonna bend that over. It'll be a little bit stiff to begin with insert your joke here just until we kind of train that cable how we want it there we go now we'll do our eight pin now this one is a little bit more tricky because it's at the top feed it through and for reference it does say cpu on the side so this one yeah that's all installed now usb c is a thick boy and this will bend over back into the port. There we go, clips in. It's not the ideal position. Some motherboards come from the right hand side and they're kind of like the SATA ones here, or they'll come out the side here, but you know, it is a budget board, so you can't expect the world. So for the two fans at the front, I'm actually gonna be using one of these adapters to split two into one, just purely to make it a little bit more um, aesthetically pleasing with the cables. So this will connect into there. And then this one here. 
like so. Then this will go through here and we'll connect it on the other side. So then this will loop back around onto here on the very top. And then we'll just push that back through. So the only other tricky part we're going to have to do is our front panel. So for me and this motherboard, just refer to your manual for which one goes where. But mine's going to be hard drive LED, reset switch, the power LED plus, power LED minus, and then power switch. And that is literally done. Now, thankfully, because we're only using literally motherboards headers for fans, we can just tuck all this together and then literally just put it behind the motherboard tray and forget about it. These are going to be the PCI connections that if you want to include a graphics card at a later point, these are the ones you'll be using for that. But I mean, for now, we don't need them. So that's what I really wanted to uh, bring you as a build that you didn't need a graphics card for. So all this, we can literally just tuck behind this additional motherboard space and just literally fit and forget. So what I'm gonna do is just tidy this up a little bit so it's a bit more um, tied down. Like for example here with the cable tie management clip, put one through there. And then this literally can be closed and then we're done. So all the hard work is done. Let's see if it posts. Oh, fingers crossed. Flick switch and press the power button, which is on the side. I can't actually see it. I think it's there. Now it may take a little bit of time on the first boot because it has to train the memory and like fill capacitors and things like that. So it might not come alive straight away. So don't panic. Oh, we've got a keyboard. There we go. F1. There she goes. Oh, so happy. Yes, always such a nice moment when this, when it posts. Oh, it's tense as well. So now we're going to go to memory. Um, I need to go into the advanced menu actually, F7. I'm going to go to overclock settings, find our XAMP, go to profile one, which will then detect 3200 megahertz. XAMP is basically like XMP for um, Intel. So that's now set to the rated memory speed of 3200 megahertz. Restarted back into the BIOS, it's now running at 3200 megahertz on our 16 gig kit. So that's all good. And then the 600 g is showing up with the Radeon graphics. So BIOS update worked and uh, everything's good. I'm actually really happy with how this has worked out. So let's get the OS installed and do some gaming. So now we're going to run the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is probably the most demanding game that I'm going to be showing you guys. It's uh, a pretty good standard benchmarking test, but of course we use an APU, so it's going to suffer a little bit. But if you consider that a standard console game will run at 30 frames, we're getting that using this uh, APU. So it's pretty good, really. And of course, if you're making the transition from console to PC, then you can expect a similar kind of performance. So. I think it's really good considering the fact that there's no graphics card in there at all. And um, it's certainly exceeded my expectations for what I was trying to do with this as well. Obviously proven that you don't need to have a graphics card to enjoy PC gaming, which is exactly what we're doing here. And of course, when the market gets a little bit better and things are a bit more normal, you can just slot a graphics card in and away you go. Just even with a higher FPS, higher qualities. Love it. Just for a reference, this is a 2560x1440p screen set to 1080p. I don't actually have a 1080 on hand, so we're doing the best with what we've got. So there we go, that's the end result of the benchmark. 28 frames as an average, so it's not too bad. You know, console-like experience without needing a graphics card. So on to Battlefield 5, one of my personal favourite games at the Mo. This is actually running really smoothly, it's impressive. So standard... Um, low spec but still looks pretty good considering it's only uh running on low average at about 40 frames a second so not too shabby perfectly adequate for 
what we want to do anyway. Been absolutely owned um, so far in this game. I am a, a noob console player for this game, generally. So uh, this is my first foray into the PC version, um, which is surprising really, because uh, considering that I'm uh, my majority PC player, this is not one that I've uh, and I've been taking up. <laughs> But the idea is to show you that these things can be done um, using an APU. I'm actually really impressed. It's going really well. Give you some bandages and be taken down by a mosquito. So that's a great demonstration. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, just skip the revive so we actually don't have to continue to play and show just how naff I am at this game. I am impressed. Um, nice frame rate. And again, no graphics card. Love it. Now on to Valorant, currently spectating after I was uh, tragically killed in this game. And this is one of the ones that we're getting a really nice high FPS. Currently at 240 frames. Yeah, so even on you know low settings, we're getting over 200 frames. So you could probably crank up the quality of this quite considerably and still get some nice... Um, some nice gaming, so yeah, very surprised. Let's see if we can get a kill here. No, <laughs> but you get the idea, you know, over 150 frames all the time on low settings for Valorant, so really good. So now we're going on to Dirt 5. This is obviously something a little bit different because not everyone just plays FPS games. Um, this is one of the play playground maps. I'm hopefully going to do a little bit better than the previous shots that I've taken of this because <laughs> they didn't go to plan at all. Showed you a severe lack of skill when it comes to me playing this. But I am using a keyboard and mouse, so I think I might be stuck in a hole here. Or maybe not. This is meant to happen, apparently. But it's all set to low at the moment. That's definitely too high. Oh no, okay. And it's really nice and smooth, like really could happily play with this um, on this. Oh, crikey. Could happily, yeah, play with these settings. No, no problem at all. Definitely go for a controller though, if you're going to actually play this game. Because keyboard and mouse, just it's not it, Chief. So yeah, just nice to show you something else as well that's not just FPS games, because not everyone just plays those. But yeah. Not even on the lower settings, but still nice and smooth. So good job, AMD. So last but not least, we've got Apex Legends. We're going to get onto a match and uh, get a better idea of what FPS we could expect. Doing it on the training grounds OK, but it doesn't really give you a true sense of the frames when you're just playing by yourself. So doesn't look too bad, to be fair. I'm getting 34 frames as we go across this. So again, very similar experience to a console but it's not got a graphics card in it. Again, reiterating that point. APU, all day. Where are we going now, boys? Where are we dropping? That's what they say, isn't it? That's what they say in, uh, that's what the youths say. But I'm impressed. It looks pretty cool as well. I might actually have to play this a little bit more. I'm being shot at. I think it's over for me. I think it is all over. And I'm dead. Okay, so that's pretty much as I expected it to go, but we did get a nice frame rate, which is what we were all looking for in the first place. So I think that pretty much sums up our gameplay. So after all of my FPS testing with the stock cooler, two fans in the front and one at the back, we've reached a height of 74 degrees which isn't too bad at all i was actually expecting it to be a little bit hotter than that to be fair but that's a really good temperature considering we're using just a stock cooler so again i am very impressed with how this build's come out so now let's wrap it all up and give you some closing thoughts so there you have it that is the no gpu needed pc i've actually been really impressed by what the 5600g actually offers of course, that's the most expensive part of the build and you could go for 
a lower chip. Um, the 1600AF is still a great processor, really affordable as well, um, but that doesn't have the dedicated graphics in, so you will need to buy a graphics card. So it's a little bit more expensive of an option, but it means you don't actually have to put a graphics card in that are obviously really hard to get at the moment. So there are pros and cons with going by this, this route. So it works out about £534 in the UK or $639, I think. It's about a $100 difference in between the currencies. There were some things that were cheaper on Amazon in the States and some things that were cheaper in the UK. So for example, the RAM's cheaper on the .com and the case is cheaper on .co.uk. So swings and roundabouts, but it does work out roughly the same if you convert the price over. In terms of the build itself, I'm really happy with how it came out. As I did mention, you know, I think the performance you get from the process is really great. And, you know, you are getting the console FPS at the very minimum with, uh, you know, a fairly good quality as well. So performance wise, it does, you know, does a good job. I've actually been really pleased with how the, the build came out, considering we're not using a modular power supply. It was actually really quite easy to cable manage. The fact that we don't have any external, well, I say external, but any um, SSDs that need cables or power as well is another great thing. So there's less cables that we need to use as well, less clutter in the case itself, but it's great. I've really enjoyed using this case. I'm gonna be doing another build with it with a bit more um, higher end parts in as well. So if you're um, looking for something a little bit more meaty, then stay tuned for that video. That will be up soon. One thing I did notice is I didn't push in, push the tabs back enough for the IO plate on the back. So I did have to do that after the fact with a screwdriver, um, but considering you know, it's a 50 pound board. I wasn't too fast at doing that. Um, so that's just one thing to know. Just make sure you push all the tabs up before you slide the board in. A little bit of a noisy back fan, but that may just be this specific fan and the one you get with your case might be fine. So, but yeah, um, really glad on how this came out. Really impressed, nifty little machine. And of course, when the time comes that you can just buy a graphics card, all you need to do is undo this screw here, pop out the brackets and install it. So really nice and simple and then you've got a nice little gaming pc but i think that's it for this video is for any more questions that you have then do leave them down below and i'll get back to you because obviously there might be something else you want me to answer that i haven't covered but i think that's it for this one uh big thanks to amd for sending out the processor for me to use in this build i will put all the part links and stuff down below as well if you actually want to build this exact setup and that's it so thank you all for watching i hope you all enjoyed this video and i'll see you all in the next one